So now we're going into the last story. You never actually get told. There's never a notification that you got the last story unlocked after you beat both stories. So it's a good thing that the last story is the default option after you select gameplay again. The disruption of the world has stopped. Really, Blaze. Then explain the swirling thunderstorm right above you. At least there's an actual cutscene this time around. Although I don't understand why they were too lazy to give Eggman and Eggman Nega actual models. Instead, they just talk off screen. And she's just their guardian? She's the guardian of the Soul Emeralds. She should know more than anyone how the Soul Emeralds work and everything. They must have... They must have rehearsed that really well. Like, how else are they able to talk like this? They must have rehearsed for a really long time writing down a script and everything. And now, when the time that she could have easily spent running out of the way of the attack, she instead decides to just stand there and get attacked. And of course they fade to black because they were too lazy to animate it. Seriously, why didn't she just duck out of the way? I mean, she's dealt with plenty of other mechas before in the course of this game alone. That doesn't really make any sense. Just because Sonic has the Chaos Emeralds with him doesn't mean that there should be explosive results from... I don't know. Since when does Eggman Land have a space between the Eggman and the Land? Eggman Nega and Eggman go on way too long about this. Like, this cutscene drags out far too long. I mean, at least we have an actual cutscene here. But then they go back to a visual novel style cutscene again. I do like how they reference Sonic Adventure again. In Sonic Adventure, when all of the Emeralds got drained of their power, they used the power of positivity to give the Chaos Emeralds their power back. And so the Soul Emeralds... Good! Knuckles saying a relatable line for once. But yeah, they're basically referencing Sonic Adventure here, doing the same thing to repower the Soul Emeralds. By using their positive... By using their positive feelings, they're summoning their power in a positive way. Oh, I do like- I like how Knuckles was all like, can we just get a move on here? Like, I'm getting a little sick of the constant message of friendship over and over again. But yeah, Sonic has to be the one to teach Blaze how to use a super form because of course she can't know how to do it. Even though she's the Guardian of the Soul Emeralds, and she should have known about this and how to use it. Like, a lot of people think that she's the hero of the world to the exact same extent that Sonic is. Like, she has, a set, she has the exact same role in her world that Sonic does in his. But if that's the case, then why is this the first time she's ever gone super before? I mean, I at least like her Burning Blaze look. Even though it's pink, it looks really good. And, in keeping with the tradition of stupid 2D Super Sonic Session memes, we have this place called Exception. At least it's not as ridiculous as in Sonic Advance 3 where they literally had a Super Sonic section called Non-Aggression. And yeah, isn't this music really suited for an epic final boss battle against a giant mecha? Wrapped in Black is the name of the song. I don't really understand why people like it so much because it you've got you got this epic final boss battle against a giant mecha and you hear someone saying too black too strong too black too strong like they're rapping about their coffee. I don't really like you can't blame me for playing something more suitable instead. Apparently, you got that rapping there because it's a reference. It's a sample of Malcolm X's speech, which Public Enemy sampled. Like, that really speaks leaps and bounds about how unsuited that song is to the actual battle. 
Like, they literally have Malcolm X's speech in a Sonic game. It also samples Snow Village Lane by Nori Yuki Iwati. And, like, if this song was really that great, then I would have found the boss fight a lot more tolerable because of it. But instead, I associated it with my memories of suffering through this horrible boss fight, and now I just hate it. This is the only boss fight music, this is the only music in the whole entire game that I actively hate. There's so many different things wrong with this boss fight, I don't even know where to begin. First of all, Blaze moves incredibly slowly up and down, but the boss she's fighting moves so much faster up and down. So it feels cheap. For some reason, just tapping the button is what causes her to charge up her attack. How are you supposed to know that? Is that's not very intuitive. Oh, usually, charging up attacks requires you to hold the button down. You've got this attack, which drains your rings, although it doesn't drain nearly as much rings as I thought it would. Which is good, because I would have been dead otherwise. And isn't it great that in a story dedicated to the message of friendship, you have Sonic and Blaze splitting up for the final boss battle? I mean, it's the most efficient and smartest way to deal with it. You've got two mechas, so you split up. But, like, the only time that they actually attack together in a coordinated effort is at the end. Surprisingly enough, Burning Blaze is the easy mode of the boss fight. Like, when I first tried out this boss fight when I was writing a review of the game, I thought that Blaze was the worst part of it. But, I had to do so much editing for this, just to be able to have a video that wasn't 8 billion years long. It's so difficult having to try to dash into projectiles in a very specific way, in a very specific position on the screen, just to make sure that they get knocked back to the boss. Like, I don't know why it can't be that you're guaranteed to always dash so that you dash towards the boss's weak spot instead instead of you, you can dash in any direction you want. But the best you can hope for is that the boss decides to be in a straight line away from you and it decides to shoot to the west and you're to the west of it. And so you can just dash in a straight line and send its projectile back. But the problem is sometimes that it'll shoot its projectile out at you from higher than you'd expect. And so you try to... It's so unintuitive, this boss. Like, how is it intuitive that you can reflect the green energy balls back at it? The energy balls look like, you know, energy balls. Things that can damage you. I don't know which is worse, the rotating blue things that constantly go off screen like it's Zelda 2's boss fights all over again, and so you have to go to the center of the screen to lure them towards you, and for some reason, the blue things can only be dashed into successfully when they're not flashing and when they're not red, even though they can interact with you whenever they want. If they can interact with you, I should be able to interact with them. Why is it so specific? Why is it so exact? Why is it so precise? Why is it that I have to wait until it's in a very specific position and then dash in a very specific way and I have to react instantly? Because it's, it's so... there's so many times when I take too long to react to the fact that I'm supposed... that I'm finally getting a good opportunity to attack. Why can't I just dash into him? He's right there! The weak spot is on the screen. There's no reason that I shouldn't be able to dash into it instead of it being in the background. This boss fight gave me absolute hell when I played it for the first time. And this was the first time I ever bothered to beat it. It's so... The only good thing I can say about this boss is that it was nice enough to have a checkpoint so that when you die at the very end of it, you reset at the final Super Sonic section. Like, it's divided into sections for Blaze and Sonic. And so, if you... Like, if you die at the final section, you restart at it. So I was able to restart with a lot of rings. But that's it.
everything about this boss is terrible, aside from the beautiful pink sky aesthetic. And that's pretty much it. Aesthetically, it looks nice. Like, I love the way Burning Blaze looks and the way the sky looks. But, like, really? Hackers couldn't have bothered to make a infinite rings for the Super Song section code? No, let's just waste our time on making an infinite rings code instead. Even though you're going to be blasting through all the levels with your boosts anyways. Like, priorities. What's that? I at least like the ending here in that it feels heartwarming and tear-jerking having this music here when Blaze and Sonic are being separated from each other. Blaze says this, but the exact same thing happens again and no such crisis occurs. Like, I like this ending. It's pretty heartwarming. Although, it, it kind of sucks how it insists on being visual novel style sometimes. Like, I don't know. But it is pretty heartwarming. Like, I, I love the way Blaze talks. I love how dignified and serious she speaks. It's so relatable. Like, even as outside of the whole, she has to deal with an obnoxious message that makes me feel sorry for her the whole game, she's still a great audience surrogate because I can relate to her so personally. Like, I like Sonic more than her when he's written well so that he's optimistic and there's more focus on him being nice than being arrogant. But, while Blaze can be dull on her own, oh, I love this. This is so nice. Everything about this is perfect. Like how slowly they move, showing Blaze's hesitance, and Sonic's lack of hesitance because he's a lot more social. I'm not really sure what's pulling them back into their own dimensions and why. I mean, I guess the dimensions are sentient and magically know when the heroes of their world need to be in them. Or maybe it's the emeralds pulling the back in? But yeah, that was pretty sweet! They were holding hands. I can understand why people ship them even though they're complete opposites and would never actually work as a couple. And I love how the sky is green here! Although in Rush Adventure, it's not green. I'm guessing it's only green in a high altitude. See? So, all the people out there saying that Blaze was bullied, and that's why she's a loner, that theory's out the window. She isolated herself. And I'm guessing this sonic flickering here is reflecting his voice echoing in the distance. I'm not really sure how Blaze is able to still hear, or how Sonic was aware that she was here and would be able to hear what he said. Okay, except in Rush Adventure, no one is holding either of the emeralds to control them, but the dimension, the dimension doesn't fall apart. Like this whole, the world is in crisis because both pairs of emeralds are in the same dimension thing creates a huge plot hole when Rush Adventure comes around, and that's never explained again. Still, I really like this. I always think it's really beautiful when there's a sky that's a different color than normal. Like, this ending is pretty heartwarming and tear-jerking, even for someone like me who doesn't like the story. But yeah, that was Sonic Rush. And I know that I was really nitpicky for Sonic's story of it, but to be honest, the gameplay does have a lot of problems. Like, it takes a lot of adjusting to the fact that the physics and controls are completely different. Although, I found that to be not that big of a deal. My real problem with the game is that there's too many gimmicks that throw you into bottomless pits, and the gimmicks aren't exactly intuitive to figure out. So, when you fail at them, they send you into pits over and over again. And there's also the fact that the levels are going on for, for quite a long time. 
So you can spend over a half hour on one zone alone, and the fact that you can't just complete an act and then save and go back to it the next day. Going back to the saving system the Sonic 3 and Knuckles for a portable game isn't really acceptable to me. So I had a miserable first experience with this game with the terrible boss fights that pad themselves out to a ridiculous extent to make them incredibly dull and boring. And the levels that just feel too hard and cheap. They punish you for not having instantaneous reaction skills even though there's screen crunch, so you can't really help that, and you get thrown into bottomless pits constantly. But on the bright side, when you know what to do, this is a really fun game. I didn't really have any problem replaying this game aside from the boss fights and altitude limits which I died on a whole bunch because this is the one level in the game where even when you know what to do, it's still terrible. But for most of the game, it's pretty fun. It's pretty harmless. The problem is that this is a game that you need to get a specific instinct for. Your Sonic instincts are not going to help you here. It doesn't matter that you played all of the other 2D Sonic games before this. This is its own thing. When you go into this game, you need to play it a whole bunch and get familiar with its levels in order to get an instinct for it. Like even, even the screen switching thing is something you need to get used to by playing the level so that you can learn to anticipate when exactly you're going to switch from the bottom screen to the top screen and vice versa. That's the only way you're going to get used to it. Like basically, don't even get me started on the story. The story is just awful. Like with Sonic Story, it's as bare bones as it gets and with Blaze's story, it's obnoxious. The music I've already ranted about, it doesn't suit a Sonic game. At least it's light and bouncy. Like, at least it's not like Chronicles music, which sounds terrible. Like, it looks good aesthetically, aside from the polygonal models, which kind of look N64-esque. Like, in general, this is a good game when you know what to do, but your first experience isn't going to be that great. Like, I met, I met a girl who had Rush as her first Sonic game, and I was blown away. I'm not really sure what happened there at the end, like, did Sonic- that really needed dialogue to make it make sense. Did Blaze come back somehow? Even though the next game establishes you need both pairs of the Soul Emerald and Chaos Emerald to travel from the Soul Dimension to the other dimension, except Eggman Nega has no problem with going from one dimension to the next. I don't know. Whatever. The next game is Sonic Rush Adventure. 